معرفة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now let us discuss about the four uh, sale contracts which we have discussed. The first is the murabaha. Now in the murabaha transaction, this is the customer or the client, this is the bank and this is the supplier. So the customer approaches the bank and the customer uh, signs a promise to purchase and requests the bank to make purchase of certain identified assets which the customer has mentioned to the bank. The bank goes and have the bank purchases those identified assets from the supplier the bank makes the payment the supplier supplies the goods the bank enters into a murabaha contract with the customer the bank adds its profit margin in the murabaha contract and the bank has purchased the goods and the bank has added its profit and the bank is explicitly mentioning in the murabaha contract about the amount of profit which the bank will be charging to the customer then the bank is delivering the goods and then the customer is making the payment either in a spot then the customer is making the payment and this payment could either be made immediately or this payment could be deferred so this is in brief a murabaha uh, transaction Musawama transaction is also quite similar to this meaning to say that the customer approaches the bank the customer may sign a promise to purchase in favor of the bank the bank goes and purchases the assets then the bank sells the asset through a Musawama contract but here the one important point is that that the bank in a Musawama contract is not obligated to tell to the customer the amount of profit the bank is making in the transaction. So this is the main differentiating feature of Murabaha and Musawama. So number one, in a Murabaha, the bank is obligated to make the customer known the amount of profit the bank is making on the transaction. In a Musawama transaction, the bank is not obligated to make the customer know about the amount of profit the bank is making on the transaction. The other structure, now for example, we have discussed about Murabaha, we have discussed Musawama, the third is Baibit Taman Ajil. So if the structure in the Baibit Taman Ajil is also very similar to this, and the only difference is that in Baibit Taman Ajil, it is essential that always the payment from the customer to the seller is deferred. This is the main feature of the Baibit Taman Ajil transaction, unlike in a Murabaha. In a Murabaha, this payment obligation from the buyer to the bank, either it could be an immediate payment or it could be deferred. But in a Baibit Taman Ajil, this payment has to be deferred. And in a Musawama transaction, it is not the obligation of the bank to explicitly mention to the customer the amount of profit the bank is making on the transaction. But in a Murabaha transaction, this is an essential feature that the bank has to explicitly mention to the customer the amount of profit the bank is making on the transaction. Now let us look at the third structure. This is a Tawarruq structure, wherein we have mentioned that in a Tawarruq structure, the customer is in need of cash. So to fulfill the requirement of the customer, the bank purchases certain identified assets from a seller. Then the bank sells the identified assets to the customer. And then the customer sells those assets to a third party purchaser and gets the cash. So if you look at this transaction, this is a Tawarukh transaction. In this case, first the customer is signing a promise to purchase with the Islamic bank. Then the Islamic bank purchases identified assets from a seller and makes the spot payment. Then the Islamic bank is selling those identified assets to the customer on a deferred uh, transaction. Now this deferred transaction could either be a Musawama, it could either be a Murabaha. Meaning to say, that this payment obligation could either be on a Musawama basis or on a Musawama, Murabaha basis. And then this customer 
after getting the possession of the assets will immediately sell this to a third party purchaser and gets the cash. So this is a Tawarruq transaction where in the first step the customer is signing a promise to purchase in favor of the bank. The customer then the bank purchases certain identified assets from the seller. The bank makes the payment to the seller. Then the bank is selling those identified assets either through a murabaha contract to the customer or through a musawama contract to the customer. Meaning to say that either the bank can clearly mention the profit which the bank is making on the transaction that is and then it becomes a murabaha transaction or the bank may not tell explicitly the profit the bank is making on the transaction then it becomes a musawama transaction and then the assets are transferred to the customer then the customer is selling those assets to a third party purchaser and the customer is getting the cash. So this is in brief the Tawarruq transaction.